Stacy Carr, and I am very excited to have my friend Deborah Hammer with four of her fantastic cool Aspies. Um, they are going to be talking to us today about socialization during this COVID time and sharing their perspectives and all the wonderful things that they have been doing. I am so excited to have them here. Um, so without further ado, Deborah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, it's glad to be back here again and with another wonderful group of young adults that I have the pleasure of working with every week. Um, I'm going to introduce them to you and then they would like to tell you a little bit about their group before they start their conversation with you about socialization during COVID. So um, first we have Alex. Hi, I'm Alex Barnes and I'm the uh, president of Cool Aspies. Tom. Hello, my name is Thomas Davis. Sarah. Hello, my name is Sarah Cornett. And Aaron. I am Aaron. And again, I am Deborah Hammer. I'm an autism and low incidence specialist in Arlington County Public Schools. And Cool Aspies is a club that I started in support. So I'm going to let the members tell you more about it. Okay, good. Basically, why do Cool Aspies begin? Why did it, 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 it young adults who wanted a like social skills group, a uh, like atmosphere post high school, and ended parents who were to work that their children were lonely and not enough opportunities for young adults with mild social disabilities and a need for high school students with similar uh, profiles to have uh, older role models as they transition into uh, adulthood. It was uh, during our first uh, meeting and that we came up with the name Cool Aspie and it, 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 on our very first meeting. That, and, it, and then does anybody have any questions? Thanks, Tom. We'll go on, and if they and if anybody does have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand or to um, put them in the chat. And I think some of our um, our wonderful people from VCU ACE will help with that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sarah. Who we are? Cool Aspies is a social club for young adults with ASD and related neurodiversity. All members are from Northern Virginia, DC and Maryland suburbs. Cool Aspie members are mostly between the ages of 18 and 27 and split evenly by gender. Capped at 40 members, we believe in self-determination. Nothing about us without us. How we are unique. No fee to join in free or affordable events. Not a therapeutic group, just a social club. Members recommend the activities. And no staff, just friends. And we have goals and expectations of and a membership. This, and our goals are to, to make friends, to have fun, learn about leisure activities in our community, improve uh, social skills, develop both independence and interdependence, and become self-determined people. We have expectations as well, and uh, the expectations are Members complete applications each calendar year. We do it usually by the beginning of the year in January. And RSVP independently and arrange transportation to events and parents are not allowed to in these activities. Those are the rules they came up with. <laughs> Mm 
over our first 12 years, our numerous activities have included bowling, cooking class, laser tag, art galleries, canoeing, and so on. Yes, we came up with a pretty extensive list, didn't you guys? Mm. This wasn't all of them, but this were the ones that they remembered. <laughs> mm. Besides activities, we also do volunteer work in, in the community. Some of the things that we volunteer are, are and they're training the Alexandria Police and Sheriff's Departments, assisting with the Smithsonian in the morning at the Museum Access Program in Washington, D.C., and helping parks with a trail renewal and removal in invasive plants and a National Zoo Advisory Panel. That's a, some of the examples of what we've done. Do you want to tell them what we do with the police department? And uh, what we did at the police department, like weeks, when uh, the wife get uh, what to do, and uh, then uh, when the police uh, they see someone who is autistic, and uh, so that way, uh, what to do, uh, so that autistic people don't get frightened or scared, and so that way it will be a safer community. We also have uh, the Cool Aspies Mentoring Program, and also known as CAMP for short. And then uh, uh, they are members who so have some expertise in an area of life, including the following attending college, living on their own, and then uh, having a job, using public transportation self advocacy and use of technology and mentors work one on one with other members or in a group and we help each other to be successful hey aaron skills we learn in cool aspies using public transportation scheduling skills using smartphone effectively, how to tip, completing forms with personal information, knowing how you can call when you need something, what activities are nearby that we may enjoy, how to ask our friends in the community to lead classes for us. Activities include escape room, talent show, game nights, special interests in show and tell, costume and holiday parties, and so on. Classes include Love on the Spectrum series, Understanding Autism, BATS, Health series, Recognizing Fake Media, and so on. Lessons learned. Summary of virtual events. What has worked well? Some new members joined. No transportation difficulties. Reduce our anxiety with new places, crowds, and sensory issues. Gave us opportunities to communicate and to get to know each other better. We meet more frequently, or all events are free. Lots of virtual opportunities and speakers. What didn't work as well? Some established members stopped coming or came in frequently due to discomfort with Zoom, with Zoom platform or lack of technology, internet, tech problems during the, the meetings hearing each other, freezing, etc. No food at our events, or rarely. Our one cooking class was just so-so. 
We miss being with each other in person. So now you guys can share your perspectives on socializing during the past year. Who'd like to go first? I will. Okay, thank you. This is Alex. He's I on the phone, so you can't see him, but he's here with us. Mm -hmm. It was, a, well, at first, sure. Yeah, it was, it was as tough as it could be, uh, um, with co um, mainly with COVID. Uh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, go any, I couldn't go outside. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere or anything like that, which is really, which is really tough because I'm not, because I'm not the kind who, uh, who uh, takes to um, laying or to um, staying just staying inside uh, 24/7? Um, uh, it's, it's not uh, even now to this day. Yours truly would not uh, give an inch that way. But when and uh, and I will, I'll admit I was uh, fairly new to a uh, Zoom meeting myself. Um, but I think gradually. Um, Things started to pick up, even if it was at uh, at, uh, at least uh, little by little by little. Thanks, Alex. Mm -hmm. Who'd like to go next? Okay, Aaron. My experience with COVID nineteen is that that I can't hang out in person with Cole Aspies anymore because of the COVID nineteen. Hopefully soon we can start hanging out again once more and more people get vaccinated. That's the goal is to start hanging out by the 4th of July, hopefully. Fingers crossed by President Joe Biden said that. In my experiences, I can't go to work anymore because I work at a movie theater. And and they have to do a deep cleaning at the movie theater, and it's very dangerous. And only fifty percent of movie of the movie theater is open in capacity because of COVID. And I don't get to see my friends at Cole Aspies anymore. And my and my other experience is that I have to stay home a lot of the time because of COVID. Thank you. What do you think about meeting on Zoom? Good. I like meeting on Zoom with everybody once a week. Okay. Thank you, Erin. Who'd like to go next? I'll go. Thanks, Sarah. Zoom has helped me, but Zoom has also been unsatisfying. Now that the weather is getting better, I'm really looking forward to seeing people outdoors. What I have been learning, since we are going to have to keep using safety precautions for a while, I'm glad I'm getting comfortable with new ways to socialize. Thank you, Sarah. And Tom? So, uh, wow, like, uh, I never would have thought we would have, like, a pandemic uh, 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 around this time. And, uh, you know, like, a COVID one, uh, of all things. And it, it, when I heard about it, it and did research, it made me think that there was, like, a flu epidemic almost a century ago, which was also something big. And it, it was something uh, mind-boggling for me. And it, but it, it made me miss my kid and my kid at Glassby activities in person too, because it's a great opportunity to be with a lot of people and help out with them. But it, it COVID, it, it still, and it, just being at home most of the time was okay at first, but then it got a little stressful at times. And then, we didn't know it, uh, and how long it would be until they came out of vaccines and, or, or for it. And then they're still doing vaccines, but 
it's only a matter of time to time until it, uh, hopefully it will be back to normal and uh, back to things instead of work. And uh, I was like a little overwhelmed about it because ever since what I learned about it, but I tried to stay calm, stay safe during it. And I've been uh, joining some of the Aspie Zoom mini meetings and it, uh, which were a lot of fun and then to do so that way i get to see it everybody and then uh, and the zoom is still a little new to me <laughs> but then uh, hopefully in a time uh, i'll figure it out and uh, pandemic wise i don't know how long it'll last and uh, i'm no doctor or scientist or and i can't predict the future but don't despair and uh, to keep your uh, to family and loved ones in a safe and, and, and for the time being. Get in and, and, and don't despair. And all I have to say and, uh, is eventually it will blow over. And, uh, I'm not sure when. It, it, it just takes time and patience. It's good advice, Tom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we would really welcome questions from members of the audience on um, things they'd like to know from, from the group. Yeah, the chat is open. So drop any questions you have for any of our presenters um, right in the chat. And I did also put um, the link to our archives page on um, the ACE website so that if anyone wanted to go back and look at the recording of today, um, you can access that on that page, so. So I stopped share so that uh, to make it a little bit easier for people to see each other and have, uh, have a dialogue. <laughs> Love it. Okay. One of the things that I think is really interesting that you were able to share today um, as I was watching it was just that we saw what you all were doing pre-COVID and, and then kind of hearing how you moved some of those same types of activities that really um, help you to be social even during COVID and making them virtual. So thanks for sharing that, everyone. Okay, and um, Stacy has something here in the chat. It says, what is one thing that you really liked about interacting online? And what is one thing that you really missed about being in person? Does anyone wanna take that question? Yep. Thomas? I'll take it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, we'll let Tom go first and then Alex. How about Alex, that? Okay. One of the things I really liked doing in person was like, we were all together, so that way we can help each other out and, and stuff. And so, and in case that somebody and newer members get a little overwhelmed or stressed or nervous about certain things, and I enjoy giving a helping hand out. And what I I miss about it, and by doing it at Zoom, is that that is that we're not all to we're not together physically in the same area but I do like like how it is on here because I get to see a lot of people thanks Tom and Alex I I I would uh, say the same except uh, but I would but you can't rule out the the handshakes or the high fives or the, or the hugging either yeah you all yeah. those things uh, let's see. Um, somebody's asking about how you join the group. Um, where is there a sign up? Yep, here? there there is a sign up. Yep, you you you, you fill out the application, and then and and then there is a waiting list because the cap is forty people. Yep, and you sign up from January first to December thirty first every year. And Aaron, who would they need to contact if they wanted an application? Miss ha Mrs. Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, a, there's an email. email. 
yeah. yeah um i can put it in the chat yeah and our chat is um alex aspies for alexandria <laughs> a cool aspies mm -hmm. right? we should have a website where where people sign up and it goes to you miss hammer oh that's a that's an idea um we have something from josh taylor he says what are some ways that you might continue to connect with people online in different ways than you did before covid hmm. um so sarah you connect with a lot of people all the time what do you usually do <laughs> I have club meetings over Zoom. And what about what, what about social media? What about social media? Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Me, what is I, Go ahead. me, I like to talk to my friend Mauricio on Messenger, and some of my friends I talk on Messenger and Facebook with. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and and Skype sometimes too. Mm -hmm. And we have our we have a private Facebook page just for members too. Yeah. we have a public one so anybody can follow us. Yeah, and then we have a private one so you guys can just talk to each other about anything. No parents allowed, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's your rule. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> um, one of the questions we have in here from Karen is, do you think that after we can get back together and, and be together in person, do you think you may still do some Zoom meetings on occasion or offer that as an option um, moving forward? Any yeah, thoughts? there will be some weeks where we do Zoom meetings still, and then there'll be some weeks where we do activities outside. Hopefully around the 4th of July, we can start doing this, like President Joe Biden said, and being six feet apart, like go, go hiking and stuff, and everybody is six feet apart. We won't be able to do indoor activities until maybe next year sometime when more people get vaccinated. We might do one week of Zoom, and then we might do one week in person outside and rotate like that maybe might do that what kind of activities that we've been doing do you want to continue to do on zoom game night and love on the spectrum yeah and the side language class yeah the sign language class mm. do you may need to tell them about the love on the spectrum class because they don't know what that is it's about some people who are dating down down under in Australia and they go out to restaurants and stuff and they have disabilities. And how did we make, how do we make that a class? We have some, some, somebody who's, who's, whose specialty is in love and sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who yeah. teaches that class to us once a month, like every first or second Sunday of each month. That's right. Yep. And then we have sign language once a month too. Yeah. Yeah. So we could continue to do this on Zoom. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Anything else that anybody has enjoyed on Zoom that you think would, would work well in the future? I think, you know, and, uh, and then uh, we'll still uh, do uh, the Zoom when it means until it's safe to, uh, to go out and stuff. But we can still do the Zoom meetings in the case and it's something uh, it gets canceled. Like if in the future, after it, uh, it's we go out in the summer that's outdoors and it gets canceled due to the rain. Yep. For that's example, we, tr you know, we try to think of a, a good alternate, but then we I'm sure like we can do like some activities on, on Zoom in, a, in case we can uh, do something outdoors that depending on the weather. That's a great point. We've had some activities that we've had to cancel, especially for snow, because it wasn't safe to go out. Um, and we couldn't, 
or rain. Yeah, occasionally too. So instead of canceling them, we could just have a Zoom meeting instead. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Also, I think, um, you know, I have a couple of um, groups that I'm a part of that sometimes I have difficulty, like the time is a little bit tight and I'm, I might not be able to do both of them in the same night. And so um, when they've offered the opportunity to join like the school board meeting on a Zoom call or something like that, I can do that and still be a part of it even though I wasn't able to make it work to get there. So it is kind of a nice thing. There are some benefits to having that option. Dr. Taylor asked if we would continue to, um, if you would continue to, to connect with people online in the different ways that you mentioned, like texting and calling and messenger and Facebook um, after, the, after the pandemic. Do you think you guys will continue to do that? Yes. I think so. It, 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 yep. it, that's a, a, several things of we, how we communicate. Mm -hmm. in, in, in case of like for example if one of our members in, 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 like it in, is unavailable at the time that we can do it by in a text or leave a message and, and so that way they can get notified of it when they get off work yeah and well, there have also been a number of group chats that have been formed in various formats i know because i've been included in them <laughs> um and you're Sarah, what's the one, Sarah, Tom, what's the one that the mentors are using? I, I can't even remember the name. I don't know. Group me, group me. They're using that. And um, I'm part of a group chat that's on LinkedIn. Um, so they're finding all kinds of creative ways of connecting with groups and, and messaging each other. It's not just one individual to another. There seems to be a lot of that, which is good. Um, Amber asked about our membership in, in more diverse areas. And yes, that has happened, although it's mostly still close to the area. I think the furthest we have uh, from us is actually Alex. You're in Maryland. We, uh -huh. have, we have two people in Maryland and we have somebody in Lorton. Um, so Stacy asked, do you guys hang out outside of cool Aspie meetings. And that means more in the real world, I think, because we know you're hanging out in chat rooms um, now, but what about in the real world? Do you guys hang out with each other outside of meetings? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, before yeah, COVID. yeah, before the pandemic. We did. Like, yes, and it was sometimes like a, a group, at, at a group like could do like a movie night, like in the past, and, and, but with the pandemic, they tried to do a virtual one and uh, for safety. What about what about group uh, pairs that are dating within the group? Do we have any yes. of those? Uh, we do have group pairs. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but yes. But I'm so, not one of them. You're not one of them, but oh. we do have some that are. Oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, yes, yes, Tom. I'm sorry, I'm making you blush. We we do have some couples. Um. <laughs> There was a question about the waiting list. Do you usually, is your group usually pretty full or have you seen a lot of change in your group since COVID started? We've had a wait list for about three years now. I capped it at 40 for just for management reasons because when we're out in the community, we never have 40, but I think the most we've had is about 25, but that's still um, a lot and it, and sometimes it's just me. Um, there's sometimes there are some other friends that that come to events, and we just want to make sure that that everything is safe and that we have the capacity to sort of and keep an eye on each other. Oh, Tom, we keep an eye on each other too, don't we? Yeah, you, you, we do. Yeah, everybody is like assigned another person <laughs> that they're responsible <laughs> for. In case we're somebody. And who's responsible for me? All of us. All of us. All of it takes a whole group. <laughs> the whole group is responsible for me to make sure I don't get lost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm interested see. in knowing, um, you know, what sort of the best part of 
the Cool Aspies group has been, you know, what has made the biggest difference in being part of that group in your life? Is that too broad? <laughs> Alex, you've been a little quiet. What do you like about being a Cool Aspie? Uh, let's see. Um, I think a couple, I think a couple of the, maybe a couple of the trips that, w that we would take, um, the museum, the museum stuff is nice, but you can't, uh, but you can't go wrong with, with uh, being outdoors either, especially, uh, and, and I, I don't, uh, I could care less uh, about the season. Um, That's true. We go out in all kinds of weather. So it sounds like yeah. the, the life experiences and those trips has been a really big thing for your life. Mm-hmm. That, that kind of stuff, else, yeah. What? Who else? What? What else have you liked about being a cool Aspie? What I like about it is like all the different types of activities and meeting a whole bunch of uh, and, uh, new people and get to know them. So that way, there will be like more friendships. Friendships. That's what I was wondering if that was a big one. Friendships is an important part. Do you all like being around other autistics? <laughs> Yes. 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 I often get told by members that they sort of get exhausted being around neurotypical people all day. So it's, <laughs> am I right, guys? I get yeah. told things like that a lot. So they, it's uh, kind of nice to be with your tribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of um, thank yous are coming into the chat to the Cool Aspies group. Um, just, I think it's been really helpful to hear from um, people who are, have been experiencing this and um, in your own way and in the support group that y'all have formed for each other um, is, is really amazing. Any other questions? Or anything y'all want to sure. share? Else. <laughs> Alex, what did you want to say? I think I, I think I do have. Well, actually, one or two questions do come to mind. One is uh, uh, the students and uh, the people there who are listening on this. Uh, what what do, first of all, what do they plan to uh, to uh, get out of uh, this um, this presentation? And uh, and, uh, and second, uh, are there any of them out there who want to, who 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 want to look into the education field themselves, like most mainly mainly teachers, um, mainly uh, because of presentations uh, just like this. You're asking that to self advocates, right? Or you're asking yeah. it to everybody? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm, at, I'm curious I, about that too. What I, are I, people I, going to get out of this? <laughs> I love it. I was about to say I I am asking everybody uh, and to cut and to cut along. Cut a long story short, I uh, I I don't I'm not as likely to play to uh, play favorites as I used to. Okay. Well, I don't. This was actually this came into the chat a little before you asked your question, Alex. But um, I think that this is really. It seems like this is inspiring a lot of people. And somebody said they wish they had a group like this in in their area. And so I think this might be sort of um, starting people thinking about um, maybe if this is something they might want to um, initiate a group like this in their in their area. So that's a good takeaway, I think. Uh, well, I don't, well, I wouldn't. I don't know what the um, what the what the turning point uh, for uh, for everybody would be, but it's. Um, um, but if, but if this is part of their uh, gut instinct to look into uh, education themselves, then uh, uh, the, uh, then then I say do it. They um, they they really they they really the majority of them they really can't uh, go wrong on um, on that level uh, if if uh, if you ask my honest opinion. Thanks, Alex. Do the rest of you think that others in this group, others that are attending today, could start a group like ours? Yes, I think so. But, uh... Why not? Why not? Feel free to expand it in different parts of the the, the, the world. Like it at 
that way it is and everybody can make friends and stuff to make it try to be a safer place, better place. Definitely. Bingo. Um, I love, it looks like uh, we had somebody um, put something in the chat and then said that she's, her perspective is she's a school psychologist in the Southern Virginia area. And, um, you know, it's good for her to learn about how you're, doing your group and creating those social opportunities and that will help her she's working with high school students to form similar clubs and groups so it sounds mm -hmm. like it's very much the case yeah. yeah and is there a facebook page someone said they were kind of looking for that and only saw a private group we have a public group too so there is a both a private and a public page if i can find it i'll put it in the yeah, it might be under pages uh, rather than groups. I'm not sure how they how they do that, but we do have a public page. Yeah, it'll be cool Aspies. Yep, that's all it is. <laughs> Got it. I'll take a look for it and see if anything else comes through the chats. Great. Oh yeah, I think I found it. Okay, I'm gonna pop this into the chat for everyone. Here we go. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> you guys ever felt lonely over the past year? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's not too lonely with the Zoom things. It because that way I know everybody's being safe and careful and they're doing okay during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's true. You guys do look after each other. Yeah. Okay. Any other last minute thoughts or things that you just really want to make sure we share or Deborah, anything else that you have that you want them to, to bring about? Well, I wish you could have met some of our other members, but a lot of them are in school. Many are in college, <laughs> many are working. So this was a challenging time of the day, but um, they've been really good support for each other during this difficult time. Uh, I know there I, I know that some had never texted before or used um, social media prior to the pandemic. So it was a good opportunity to acquire some new skills. And we are all about acquiring new skills. Um, that's why we, we get out of our comfort zone so much of the time and try things like rock climbing and um, <laughs> uh, a new class. We've done line dancing. We've done some some things that maybe people never thought they would do before, but we just go out and try them. If somebody um, makes a recommendation for it, we try to do it. And yeah, but if, if, who knows? Maybe there's a, a new hobby that you might like. That's exactly right. And some people have formed new hobbies. We We've done a lot of work with Morning at the Museum, which is an access program by the Smithsonian that Dr. Taylor helped form. And, uh, and, and one of our favorite activities is at the US Botanical Gardens. And we have three members now that volunteer there on a regular basis outside of Aspies. Um, it's, it, it's, of course, COVID shut it down, but um, in normal times, working in the gardens has been very therapeutic. We have one member who's an educator there now. So it's not just taking care of the plants. She's actually educating people about the, the gardens and the different plants and run stations. So they've developed ways of uh, new hobbies, new talents, new interests just by exposure, right? And the, I think the public transportation has been a big one. Um, I mean, you all teach each other how to use Metro. I don't, uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. have to go with you anymore. <laughs> they, I used to go with them and we'd, we'd form a group and we'd meet at the Metro station. I never do that anymore. I, I just show up and, and they've all gotten themselves there <laughs> and they help each other out. So it's the mentoring program has been really amazing. Indeed. And sort of going on to other mentor programs. Sarah, do you want to talk about some of the other mentoring programs you've done since then? 
What are the other two groups that you help out with? I am a volunteer with the Order of Self-Determination through Arlington County. And I'm also an ARC mentor. Yeah. So we have some real leaders that have emerged from the group. Wonderful. It looks like um, Josh Taylor has put some information about the uh, morning at the museum. So thank you, Josh, for adding that since um, Deborah mentioned and brought that up. Um, we also have the information about next week's and, and we can still talk, but I just wanted to let you know that in the chat, there's a link to register for next week's Lunch and Learn also. Um, just don't want anybody to miss that. Any other thoughts there? Anybody else want to say anything else? Eric? Yep. yep. The morning museum was started by my friend Josh and, and Roger and other people who, who started morning at the museum. Yeah. You and you miss that program, I know, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll get back there. Soon. Yep. Hopefully soon. Yeah. When things open back up and you all are out and about in the community, I would love to come up and hang out with you guys if that's okay. Yes. I think do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Of course. It was wonderful meeting all of you. Thank you so much for your time and your passion and sharing your interests. We greatly appreciate it. And if anyone has any questions, you know how to reach Deborah and she can reach everybody else to ask them questions as well. So thank you so much. And you all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.